today, we're gonna give you the brutally honest scoop on poop. Yeah, today we're gonna compare the Boon John made by Seahead composting toilet that we use here in our off-grid home. And we're gonna compare that to the Nature's Head composting toilet that we have in the van. We're gonna be very honest with you and we're gonna tell you things that people normally don't talk about when they're doing their van tours and telling you about their beautiful, wonderful composting toilet. Right. The one thing we hear about composting toilets all the time is that they smell. So stay to the very end of the video because we're gonna tell you what we've discovered over 10 years of using a composting toilet. The single most important thing you can do to keep your toilet from smelling. Welcome to Clarity Off Grid. We're Matt and Christina. We live off the grid in our self-sustaining home in the mountains of Colorado. And when we aren't working on projects here at home, we're traveling in our Ram Promaster van that Matt converted into a sweet home on wheels for us and our two dogs, Jesse and Lily Bell. Join us as we share living off the grid during the cold and snowy winter months and traveling to new and exciting places. Leave us a comment, introduce yourself, or just say hi. We'd love to know what kind of information you'd like about off-grid living and traveling. If you like this video, make sure you let us know by clicking the like button. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking the red subscribe button and ringing the bell to make sure you get notified when we upload new videos. Welcome to the throne room in our off-grid home. And this is our Boon John Seahead composting toilet. So as you can see, this toilet is pretty compact. It was designed by a boat maker in Florida and his company is called Seahead. This toilet was originally designed to be used on a boat and now a lot of people use them in their RVs and their tiny homes and we've chosen this toilet in our off-grid home. It has a typical toilet seat on it, which is really nice. It has this little chamber pot lid that you lift when you use it. So you remove the chamber pot lid and it stows neatly in the back of the toilet seat. And then for all composting toilets that we've ever used, you wanna make sure that whether you're a man or a woman, you sit down on the toilet to do your number one and your number two. So guys, you're just gonna have to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> all good composting toilets have one main thing in common, and that is they separate the liquids from the solids. Well, let me tell you a story about having a toilet that doesn't do that. When I decided to build Twisted Oak, I made a conscious decision that I wanted to use a composting toilet, and we have no other septic system in the house. And the composting toilet of the day was a toilet that shall remain nameless, but it combined both the liquids and the solids in a large drum, and then you rotated that drum. It was super complicated, it was impossible to clean, and what eventually happened over a short period of time after using it was the drum would fill up with basically sludge. And I would have to empty that toilet, which was really complicated, about every week. I would wait till the kids would go to school because they'd be so disgusted by the smell. And I'd light incense and put it all over the house. And then I would get out my big purple poopy bucket and I would literally clean out that toilet. And sometimes I had to use a, even a wet shop vac, which was, we won't go into those details. <laughs> and this went on for years and I was so committed to using a composting toilet that I just put up with it. But then when I got the Boon John, it was absolutely life changing. We now have the separation of the liquids and the solids. We have no smell. It's super easy to empty it, even if we empty it every third day or so. And it has made life a dream. So when you're sitting down, the solids naturally go to the back and the liquids go to the front. So they're separated. Solids fall into a bucket in the back and that bucket is filled with a medium. We currently use some wood shavings that we get from the co-op. Liquids naturally flow to the front and they're collected in a one gallon bottle for this toilet. Then when you're done with your business, you put the little chamber pot lid back on the toilet 
you close the lid, and you take the handle that we have stored in the basket, and you insert it in this hole, and you turn that crank about a dozen times. And what that does is it covers up the solids, and that keeps them from smelling. There are two ways that the Boon John handles liquid collection. One, you can collect it in a one gallon bottle, and then you have to empty that. If there's two people using it, probably every day. The other thing you can do is get a urine diverter, and that's what this is. And we ended up ordering this. What this allows you to do is the urine goes into here, and then there's a tube attached to here, and it flows outside, and you can divert that out to like a gray water garden or a septic line. What we have found is over time, these small tubes get gucked up with scale. And then when they stop draining properly, the pee can back up. So when the pee backs up and it overflows, it overflows into the box of the Boon John and it's really a mess and really disgusting to clean up. We've just gone back to the old-fashioned, simple way of collecting it in a one-gallon jug and then emptying it every day. While we're out here, I just want to take a few minutes to talk about the importance of the proper composting system. So if you're going to incorporate a composting toilet into your home, before you even pick out your toilet, you need to figure out a composting system. What's really important is to have a bin where you collect about a year's worth of waste, because you're going to want to let that waste compost for at least a year. So what we have here is we have, this is the current bin where we're putting all of our waste. And we'll fill this bin up and then we'll cover it and we will let it rest for a year. And back here, we have a bin that we collected waste in for well over a year, maybe even two years. And it is currently composting and we're just letting it rest. I didn't really understand this this well when I built my home and I had read things about in composting toilet reviews where they said, oh, you just take the waste and you sprinkle it under trees. Believe me, you do not want to take waste right out of a composting toilet and sprinkle it on your property anywhere. You need to have it safe and controlled so that animals, your own dogs, wild animals don't get into it. Most of the time when I empty the bucket, I take it over and I hose it out and I rinse it out. Women's anatomy sometimes makes it difficult to, in this toilet to really keep all of the liquids separated from the solids. And sometimes some of the liquids get into the solids bin, which makes it kind of slimy. So in that case, I usually give it a good rinse out and even let it sit in the sun for a while. Every time I empty the Boon John, I just like to give it a quick wipe down. It's super easy to clean, so it's easy to do. And that's another way of keeping smells down. What I use is for all my cleaning, I use water with a little bit of vinegar and some tea tree oil or even a little bit of lavender. The thing when you're cleaning a composting toilet is you don't want to put that into the solids bin because that can deter composting. So we told you we'd give you the down and dirty on this. And this is one thing that happens when you collect your urine in a bottle is that it does start to get scale on the inside and it's pretty skanky. So we'll use a bottle for a couple of weeks or until it gets really dirty and then we'll just throw it away and put in a fresh bottle. So one of the other nice things about this toilet is it has this cutout observation spot so that you can see how much urine you have collected in that bottle. So you want to keep an eye on that line and make sure you change out the bottle or you empty the urine bottle before it overflows because it will overflow into the bin. 
And if you're if you're like me and you have to get up and pee three or four times a <laughs> night, you want to make sure before you go to bed that that thing has enough room in it to last all night. Sometimes with small children or with women, if you get too far forward on the toilet, you can get some solids into the liquid area. And that's probably one of the worst things that can happen because some of those solids can get down in that really small hole and you have to clean that out. So if you're just emptying into a gallon bottle like we do now, it's not so critical. But if you're using the diverter and you have tubing that goes out to a garden and some of that gets stuck in that tubing, so you can have a real problem with backup and then you have to clean out that entire line. The Nature's Head composting toilet in the van. The way we designed this was so that the toilet cabinet is tucked away nicely underneath our closet and we can open it up here so that all we have to do is basically close the door. We have the privacy we need. Even in a parking lot or something we have the seat right in front of us so nobody can see in to see what we're doing. And there's our toilet. Just like the Boon John, this toilet is designed so that the solids go in the back and the liquids go in the front. It's got a pretty nice design here so that uh, you open this up to get to the solids bin and then you can close it. So if you're doing both, you can sit down, you can pee when you have the urge, you can open it up, do your number two and close it up. Uh, it works very well. Um, the seat is built in, the toilet seat is actually built in to here so you don't have a separate seat that you have to deal with um, and then the hinge goes right on top. Everything is self-contained. The pee bucket is right here. That pee bucket holds about two gallons so with two of us using it we only have to empty it about every uh, two to three days which is kind of nice not to have to empty it every day. So once you do your number two you're going to have to uh, agitate the medium just like you do in the boon john and the way that's done in the nature's head is by this handle uh, on the side and we found that it works pretty well you can actually use that handle and do it by hand when you've just changed the medium but after a after a week or two it starts to get a little harder and you have to use your feet to do it and this handle you can't do that very easily with bare feet because it hurts. So we basically have to put our shoes on in order to turn the crank handle uh, in this toilet. Also, after you use the toilet, you can spritz it out with a little water and clean it up. If you leave any skid marks, you got to clean it up with a piece of tissue and just drop that into the compost medium. We do use toilet paper and we drop it right into the compost medium uh, in both of our toilets. To empty the pee bottle, you actually have to lift the toilet bowl on this toilet. And you do that by disconnecting these latches, these two latches. So you just lift and pull the urine bucket out. So you empty it and then you put it back in. So it basically takes three hands to do it in our van because there's not enough room here for me to lift this and open it all the way to just drop the handle in. So I have to kind of squeeze it in there and if there's nobody around, I have to use my knee to actually get it in. So in order to clean this, I first need to disconnect the vent and the vent power. I need to unscrew the anchors that anchor it down and then I need to lift the whole thing out so it is <laughs> so it is helpful to do that after the pee bucket's been emptied because it'll be much lighter. To empty the toilet I just open these two latches. There's one on that side, one on this side and then I can lift this out of the way and it has to lift about two to three inches and then it's got a, a, a hinge that just slides off of there. So 
As you can see, this is a little bulky, but, and you can see the medium in here. I'm not gonna change it because I've just changed it, but you can see it's nice and loamy. And even after two to three weeks, we noticed that there was really no smell and it really was quite easy to deal with and to empty. So one thing I really like about this toilet is it also comes with a lid and you can put that lid on here and empty it later. So if you actually are in a place where you don't feel comfortable emptying your pee bucket, you can have, you can get a second pee bucket and then you can just store this one and empty them when you're ready. If you buy one gallon jugs with screw on lids for your Boon John, you can also do that that way. With the Boon John, because we empty it about every two to three days, it doesn't have any time to compost uh, in the toilet. So it does all of its composting in the composting bins outside. But in this toilet, we've actually gone three weeks uh, before we've had to change it. And the volume doubled in there, but the consistency didn't change very much and it did not smell hardly at all. It smells very earthy uh, when you're changing it. Um, and all you have to do is take a plastic bag, dump it into the plastic bag and empty it into a dumpster. Um, it's totally legal and totally safe to do that. With these handles, when everything is put together, there's a ledge back here. It's not really a handle, but there is a handle and there's a handle here. So it's not too bad to carry it this way, but when it's full, it's quite heavy. When you want to empty it, there's not a handle on the front and there's not a handle on the back of the toilet bowl. So when you open it up and remove the toilet bowl, it's just very awkward to do. You kind of have to hold on to these latches or hold on over here somewhere, pull this off, set it out of the way, take this out, and then when you empty it, the only handle you have is this ledge and here. And it's doable, but it would be nice if they would put a little more thought into uh, providing some other means of handling this when it's full and you need to empty it. Especially the toilet bowl. And then you have the same issue putting it together. You just have to find something to grab onto while you put it back together. Um, even just a handle up front somewhere would make it so much easier to manage. So there's also no indentation on the bottom of the pee bucket either. So when you want to empty it, you pretty much have to reach all the way under it, grab it, and empty it. Okay. We thought we would reiterate the likes and dislikes of each of those toilets. Yeah, and we have some different likes and dislikes between the two of us. Definitely, on everything. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so the things I like about the Boon John is it's small. It looks like a regular toilet as far as when you sit on it, it uses a regular toilet seat. It's also easy to clean and it's also easy to empty it and change it out which we have to do fairly frequently, so that's good. Yeah, and what yeah. I don't like about the Boon John is that we have to empty it more often, mm -hmm. uh, that we haven't really figured out the right medium yet mm -hmm. to make it compost. We're having issues with the compost. We can't get a thermophilic compost happening, and we think it's because those wood shavings that we're using um, must have pine or something in them that is... Uh, mm -hmm. compost resistant. And we've talked about using the cocoa coir because we've had such great results with it in the nature's head. But when you're emptying out a toilet every three days and you would have to go through the whole process of softening that cocoa coir and preparing it, it's a bit of a process all in itself. And if you had to do that every three days, that would be really challenging. Plus the amount of cocoa coir that you need to put in there you would have to, it would cost about $5 every two to three, every three days um, mm -hmm. 
which that'll add up. That's pretty, that's kind of prohibitive. It's totally different to spend $5 over three weeks. Right. Okay. The other thing that I dislike about the Boon John is the toilet seat has a cutout in the back of the toilet seat uh, where the crank goes down into it. And quite frankly, that hurts when I sit on it. And for, as for a woman, you kind of have to adjust your position on the toilet in order to, you know, get the solids going the right direction and the liquids going the right direction. And the other thing I've heard from my sons, I don't even know if we want to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind it, of a small area. Yeah, it's not a very deep um, urine collector. So for men to sit on that, I'm, I've just heard antidotally that it might not be all that comfortable. <laughs> Is that properly said? <laughs> Yeah, another point I want to make about the Boon John is that it's designed not to use electricity. And so there is no vent on it. And it works fairly well that way. But if you do put it in a van, I think you would want to incorporate some sort of venting system, uh, like similar to the Nature's Head, to make yeah, it work you'd in a have, van. Yeah, you'd have to get yourself a, a little vent uh, and route it out and then down through the bottom of the van somewhere so that you can vent the smell away. Because mm -hmm. it does smell some. And and don't let them tell you that the nature's head doesn't smell at all because it does a little bit. If you didn't have that vent in there, um, it would you'd be able to smell it in your van. Yeah. But with a cocoa coir, it definitely is much less smelly than the Boon John can be, in my opinion. Yeah, I would tend to disagree with that. I don't find that either one of them smells very bad at all. I mean, more, less so than actually a conventional toilet, in my opinion. The odor that you get from a composting toilet is more of an earthy smell. It's not a fecal smell that you might get in a conventional bathroom. Yeah, that's true. I agree with that. One more thing about the Boon John is if you wanted to use it in a van, they now have a what they call a pee tank. And so you can get a tank that installs in that inside the toilet where it will help keep any kind of sloppage from the liquids bucket getting into the box. So if you're moving in an RV or in a boat, you want to get that pee tank. The nature's head. I really like the design. It's very easy to use. It's nice to have that latch right behind you when you're using it. You can urinate as you need to, and when you need to do the number two, you just open the flap, and then you can close it right away and keep venting what little fecal smell there is when you are in a 60-square-foot uh, <laughs> space with another person um, mm -hmm. doing that. Mm -hmm. um, it's really nice to be able to just close that up and have it vent out. Right. And I would say on that order, um, I really had a hard time getting used to the toilet seat in the nature's head. It's not really a seat. It's just a rim. So it's kind of like sitting on a big bowl, which was awkward for me. I mean, I think you can yeah, get used to it. Yeah, it's not real comfortable. Yeah, it's not super comfortable, but you know, I manage and I, and it's okay. And it doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hurt it's just not all that comfortable yeah and the other thing i have to say is the hole for the solids is fairly small so sometimes you have to clean up a skid mark <laughs> true definitely more often than in the boon jump. yeah and the other thing about the nature's head is as nice as it is it is just a big hunk of plastic so those of us who are kind of concerned about all the plastic in the world, it is just a big, huge chunk of plastic. Um, that said, it's not one use plastic and I think it'll last a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it can be, it's very cumbersome to have to change it a lot. So if you're using it in a if you were to use it in a household where there might be four people and changing that out every week, it might be a little bit, um, challenging. Yeah, with the handle situation on it, um, it's pretty bulky and awkward. Uh, if your hands are dry, it's hard to hold that bowl. I found it to be pretty awkward. It really kind of takes two people. It's much easier if you have two people to manage 
that toilet yeah, that you find. Yeah, sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and definitely emptying it into a garbage bag um, is a challenge for one person because you got to try and get the garbage bag up over the top and dump it over, and it's helpful to have two people do mm -hmm. that. Yeah, for sure. The crank mechanism is a challenge to use when it starts to get very full in the nature's head. Mm -hmm. um, you got to have shoes on, basically, and it takes some... Even then, it, once it starts to get full, it takes full force to get that spindle to turn. Yeah, I was going to yeah. be nicer about it, but it does. It takes quite a bit of yeah. force. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to especially reiterate the venting uh, in the van with the nature's head is really very nice mm -hmm. to have. Um, it vents outside, and because it's so loamy in there and so earthy, even when you are outside and you can smell it, it's not really an offensive smell. Um, so the one thing I was really resistant to when I built off-grid was having any kind of fan running full time. I didn't want the noise and I was worried it would drain down my solar system. What we found on the van is you hardly can hear the fan running on the nature's head. It's so quiet and because it's in that cabinet maybe, even more so and it doesn't seem to be drawing enough electricity that it's really a problem it's not an issue yeah so if you do want to incorporate one into an off-grid home make sure you wire it properly so that you can have electricity running to it so that you can vent it and have a way to vent it outside yeah i agree with that yeah we'll include a link to both of these toilets and their accessories in the description down below and now, because you've made it all the way to the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you what I've discovered to be the number one way to eliminate odors in a composting toilet. And that is simply to eat a whole food, healthy diet. So we're gonna wrap up this video here. We hope this has been helpful to you. We hope we've been frank and brutally honest about our experience with composting toilets. This is the kind of information I wish I had had mm -hmm. years ago when I was uh, learning about composting toilets. So if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments. We would be happy to answer them as frankly and honestly as we can. I spell out my whole journey of learning about composting toilets in my book in a chapter called The Scoop on Poop. So if you're interested in that book, I'll leave a link in the description down below. This is really hard to talk about. <laughs>